Okay, hello, welcome, uh, welcome everyone to the second edition of Multi Hole Talks. Uh, we're going live on Instagram. It is Wednesday, May twenty seventh, and we're uh, very excited, of course, very happy to meet you uh, again. Before we start, um, uh, I'm going to remind you what Multi Hole uh, Talks is exactly. I know some of you may be joining for the uh, for the first time. Uh, so uh, what's important to say is that, you know, the idea came to us uh, basically because we miss meeting people. We miss meeting you all uh, with the recent events, of course, the pandemic, the flight ban, uh, boat shows being canceled. We're not able to meet uh, in person, not able to shake hands, not able to talk. Uh, and we miss that. And so we thought we're going to give ourselves an extra opportunity to meet online, have some tea, and answer your questions. Um, and last week in the first edition of uh, multi Hole Talks, uh, we had a nice cup of tea with uh, our company uh, president and founder Francis Lapp. So we uh, we had him answer a, a number of questions that you uh, that you all shared. And thank you again uh, for sharing those with us. This week, uh, we're doing uh, something different. We're meeting uh, someone from our project management team. We're meeting our project manager, Lucas, here with us today. Hello, Lucas. Hello, everyone. So, Lucas is part of a fairly big team of project managers here at, uh, at Sunreef. And uh, obviously, what the project management uh, team does here uh, is making things happen. And this is really a, a big, a big subject. And Lucas is going to give us an insight into, uh, into this. Uh, but basically, project managers are in touch with our customers from the very first handshake to the delivery, and of yeah. course, in between a lot of things happening, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you you've been kind enough to share a, a couple of questions over the weekend and yesterday, and uh, thank you so much for uh, for sharing those with us. Uh, so we're going to ask them in a uh, random order, the, the order that we receive them in. So this is going to appear a bit random. But the first question, Lucas, is going to be about yacht transportations. How do you transport the yachts to the Caribbean? To the Caribbean? Uh, first of all, Sunreef uh, delivers uh, boats which are fully ocean-going vessels. So starting from uh, 50 uh, feet uh, sailing boats, we are uh, fully available to and fully capable to and do the trans transatlantic uh, crossing without any problems. So that's one way of, of deliveries after the boat is handed over to the, to the owner here in, uh, in the Gdansk shipyard. They just take the direction to Caribbean and, and they, they do the crossing on, on by their own. And obviously if, if a customer has such a request, uh, we also um, help to organize um, cargo where boats are loaded here in Gdansk uh, port and being delivered to whenever the port is all over the world. Okay, so basically you're, you know, you're, you're in touch until the delivery, but you know, obviously, uh, you know, transportation, uh, that, that all of this happens after the deliveries, so you're yeah, basically exactly. in touch after the delivery of the, of the yacht as well. Okay, the next question is about color choices. What color choices do you offer for the uh, Sunreef range? Uh, for the Sunreef range, um, uh, for most boats, the standard color is, is, is white gel coat, but of course on, uh, on special uh, requests we can offer um, color gel coats in uh, full RAL uh, palette colors. Yeah. And uh, except uh, gel coat paint, we offer um, lacquer painting, including metallic paints uh, in full range of colors available. Um, we did a few extraordinary orders as well. Uh, we had a boat uh, painted with metallic paint uh, with uh, particles of, of uh, diamond dust in the paint. Yeah, I remember so it was, that it was something, uh, something special, and like I said, something very unusual. Um, and of course, every um, different part of the, of the superstructure can be can be painted in uh, different colors. So this gives to the owner even um, um, more options to, to make his boat looking um, unlike any other. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the, the customization applies. It's not only about yeah, interior sure. decors. It's 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 from the exterior. You can give your superstructure a given color, and then your halls. And, uh, and I do remember the, the diamond boat that you mentioned. That was quite spectacular. Uh, it looked extraordinary in the in the sunshine. I remember we brought it to uh, to Cannes, 
and to uh, to Monaco. It, it, she was a head turner. Yeah, that, that much, I must say. Yeah. Okay. So next question is about the range. The range of the eighty sunroof power. What is the maximum range of the eighty sunroof power? The maximum range for eighty uh, sunroof power with uh, diesel engines uh, is uh, Atlantic crossing. We can fully uh, cross Atlantic on our own, uh, depending on engines. And, uh, and, uh, and secondly, for Sunrif 80 Eco range, uh, we can fully uh, rely on the solar panels which are installed on the surface of the composites. Uh, and we try to uh, use as much surface as possible to, 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 to get as much power from the, from the solar panels as we can. And, uh, and thanks to this, uh, the range that we have is practically unlimited for the Sunleaf 80 Eco. Yeah, so we, we mentioned that. I, be, I believe it was like close to one month ago. We had a, uh, like a virtual online press conference about the Eco camera. And so we mentioned this aspect of the uh, yes. of the Eco yachts and how how much surface of solar panels you can actually fit on the yeah. uh, 80 Sunleaf power. We, uh, we have like close to 200 square meters of that and obviously the more panels the more power generated and now as you mentioned Lucas we, we have a solar basically solar powered yacht so quite exciting potential here for the uh, for the range of the uh, 80 sunroof power uh, next question uh, may be a bit bit obvious but then again I'm very curious to, uh, to know your insight what are the stages step by step in uh, the management of a yacht build project so how, how does that you know, how does that start and, and what is the important? Of I think, first of all, we need to emphasize that Sunreef produces uh, custom-made boats, right? So, um, at the very beginning of the project, we try to get to know um, uh, the owners and uh, to understand what are their needs and to collect uh, the, re the requirements with regards to navigation or uh, whether the boat is going to be used as a private or commercial boat um, um, regarding autonomy, about um, regarding comfort on board, material used. Uh, so you want to get, so to, you get at, to know At each the other, very right? beginning we try to get to know each other as much as we can to understand what the customer expects from the shipyard. And what are his needs? And, uh, and based on this, um, we start um, uh, the design phase, right? So, um, having the requirements, um, we do uh, detailed engineering. Uh, you know, um, every boat is different. So, uh, we work on, uh, on, on the design of the furniture, on the design of the systems, uh, the 3D model. And, and once this part is done, we ask for, for formal approval of, of the drawings and we start with the construction stage. So that, correct me if I'm wrong, is a very, very important stage, those first two stages, because uh, if you, for instance, were working on like standardized boats, then you wouldn't have to gather all these details, right? Yeah. But that way, the first phase, I, I believe when you, you know, basically when you shake hands, uh, with the owner, with the family, uh, when you ask the right questions, basically, and you get all the answers, that is, I think, the, the crucial part for, for a customized boat. Uh, and then, yes, and then once you have, I think, that, that vision here, you uh, I, I believe you start to build. <laughs> exactly. The construction starts uh, as a shipyard. We don't have any subcontractors, subcontract so basically every stage of construction is, is, is done by our hands. Uh, we, pr we prefabricate composites, uh, we do assembly, uh, we produce, we design and produce and, and, and assembly our own furniture uh, once it's approved with the owner and uh, uh, we install our systems. Uh, most of them, I mean, maybe not most, but all of them is in-house made systems as well. Uh, also stainless steel works, electrical works, uh, for the entire stage of the construction, obviously we stay uh, in contact uh, with the owner to keep him informed, to keep him in touch, what is going on on his boat and where are we at the stage uh, at the moment. And uh, uh, of course, after the, after the boat is done and the boat has left uh, the construction facilities, uh, the boat is launched here on the Baltic Sea where we do uh, the sea trials and, and final delivery and, and over to, to the end. Okay, so a, a, a lot of things happening, right? From uh, from the, the very first stage when you get to meet your, your customer to the delivery, I believe a, a lot of details to uh, to discuss. 
Um, Tell the next question is about the uh, the ratio of, of, of sailing to power catamarans on order at the moment. So I think the most successful uh, boats are at the moment Sarif uh, sailings boats. I mean 60 sailing, 80 sailing as well and also uh, a newly um, built Sarif 70 sailing. But we see uh, a growing interest in motorboats uh, as well, ranging from 60 uh, to 80 feet. Uh, but as well, uh, we have a positive trend uh, for uh, large catamarans, uh, like 100 feet uh, powerboat and 160 feet powerboat as well, to be delivered in uh, 221. Okay, well that's that's great. We 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 can generally feel that that growing interest for the uh, for the new power range. Um, I believe you, you all know, you know, the eighty sunroof power. That's the model that that Rafael yes. Nadal commissioned for himself. And then we have the sixty and seventy, kind of following the same uh, design spirit, the same design uh, guidelines, and uh, obviously they they induce interest. But you're absolutely right about the volume of the power cats. They grow. They get fat. 100 and 100 they get time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the 160 they, they they proved that we've only just received a, a question about your your favorite model within the sunroof yas range what's your favorite boat uh, i think the favorite boat of mine is 80 80 feet uh, power boat i mean it's, it's a it's a big cut already but it's still below 24 meters uh, so it's considered to be it, it's built for specific requirements for yachts below 24 meters uh, living spaces are outstanding, uh, very good performance, very good uh, engine setup uh, available for the owners, so, uh, and the customization. Uh, I think Sunny of is my favorite boat at the moment. Okay, good. Well, moving on to the next question, what is the, oh, that one's interesting, the toughest and the most rewarding part of your job? <laughs> so two things. <laughs> Here again, uh, we produce uh, custom boats, right, which are fully personalized, depending on, on owner's uh, liking. And it means we need to, as project manager, we need to um, take care of lots of aspects in order to um, meet the requirements uh, of the owner and to deliver uh, the full scope of work, taking care of, of the top uh, quality on the boat. Uh, so, uh, it's actually on our responsibility uh, to deliver um, a dream boat for the owner and to meet his satisfaction in overall, right? I think that's the, I think that's the most uh, difficult part here. Um, that's the, that, that sort of challenging part. But when you say we, we also, I, I think, you know, in the question we mentioned, the, the rewarding part of the job, uh, what, what is it, you know, in The in most opinion? rewarding part of the job is, of course, the final outcome, which is a beautifully made cut moran, um, unlike any other. Um, and another aspect of uh, what, which is so rewarding is uh, returning customers. As well, because if we we, we had uh, we had uh, qu quite a lot um, projects delivered, and after a few years, owners decided to sell their boats and come back to us and buy another one. And, is, and is for that us, an it's uh, are they ordering bigger or um, they upgrade to bigger or they upgrade from old Sunrif models yeah, to, to the newest okay. uh, Sunrif line. Uh, ah, so yeah, and I, it's a, it's a good thing to know, you know, when the customer is coming back and. You, you know that you did a good job and it's uh, and that they trust you yeah exactly okay. well, that's good okay next question is about customers coming from monohull yachts do you have customers coming from monohull of course uh, of course we have uh, you know uh, in, in most cases uh, they come for overall uh, katmaran benefits which are uh, stability and safety on board which are outstanding uh, living spaces on board yeah. Uh, you know, in most cases, they, they like uh, sailing with their families. So having, uh, you know, in, in, in quite a short, let's say, um, size of a boat, we can accommodate uh, so many cabins, sleeping cabins for, for the children or, or for friends or whatever, whatever the, uh, the guests are. I think that that's one of the parts why they come for, for the catamarans. And, uh, 
And uh, a second part, why they why they switch from Mono Foods to to our boats is is again customization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, there, there's a part of the of the process, you know, from switching from Mono to Multi Hull yeah. is of course the the realization, you know, of, of the length to living space ratio and and everything, stability, safety, family friendliness, all of that sure. taken into consideration. But at the same time, when someone who is already you know convinced, you know, I want to go for a Multi Hull. But I want a customized product. They obviously turn to a, you know, to a, to a luxury, uh, you know, uh, camera manufacturer. Uh, okay. The next question brings us to customization again. What can you customize on a sunroof exactly? Uh, within a given uh, yacht model, you can customize customize pretty much everything. We can customize the technical specs. Of course, there are some standards that we offer, but on the request, we can uh, put. Um, on other equipment, uh, we can customize layout. Basically, from the scratch, we can make new layout uh, for, um, for 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 on, on, on the request. Um, we can customize exterior painting. We can customize interior finishing materials, um, equipment installed on on, on the yacht. So. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's like I said, it, within a given uh, range of a boat, we can customize pretty much, pretty much everything. So it, it, it breaks down into the, let's say, the, the technical aspect. You can, well, yeah. you can, you know, work with the, with the specs, but also the, the comfort. Yes. Uh, you can customize the layout. But, and then again, aesthetics, of course, your, your, you know, the, the tastes and, uh, and the interior decor that you want uh, on board. But of course, I think also important thing to say is that uh, one-off builds are, are a thing at Sunroof Yachts. Yeah, absolutely, we have like you know, yeah, basically one-off projects. It's, well. a, it's a separate topic. It's our 100% customized boats. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, to the next question. How are the yachts tested? Um, so the, all the yachts uh, uh, built in our shipyard um, are tested on the Baltic Sea, uh, which gives uh, very good weather conditions uh, uh, for motor and for sailing as well. Uh, we have a full uh, testing uh, procedure uh, where we test the performance of, of each boat uh, on the engines and, and on sails as well. Uh, we test engines, uh, RPM, we, we test uh, propellers, uh, we test all the systems uh, installed on board uh, and once the procedure is uh, is closed and the shots are finished uh, we hand over boats to, to our clients okay so they're, they're thoroughly uh, and, and of course clients are are invited to participate in the sea trials so it's uh, not that we test the boats and uh, okay well that's good because the, the next and the last question is about uh customers that one's really interesting it's going to sound a bit personal are yacht buyers difficult to work with what do you think <laughs> i mean you know people buying yachts of course there are demanding customers because they pay certain amount of, uh, of money for a yacht like this right uh, in most cases there are yacht, there are companies uh, owners or there are celebrities or sports stars and uh, quite often they are used to top quality service that we that we give to them uh, but I think it doesn't mean they are uh, difficult to, to work with. Uh, we just, uh, you know, at, at some point we just uh, feel the responsibility for delivering uh, their dreams. And, uh, and I think that's the most, the, the most difficult part in this. Okay, they're big personalities and they have big, you know, big dreams. The bigger the dream, the bigger the project, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Lucas, thank you so much for uh, for sharing your insight. Into, thank you uh, for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, for, for we, we had a, a really nice insight into what it is to be a, a project manager here at, uh, at Sunroof Yachts. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for sharing your, uh, your questions. Uh, we will surely see you all again in the third edition of uh, multi -Hole Talks. We'll be back with more tea, more guests, uh, more questions and, uh, and more answers. Okay, so thank you so much uh, again for joining us online and stay, uh, stay in touch, stay tuned for more news. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank Bye. you.